Right, we're now going to have a look at how contours are drawn originally. If we look at an island, you will see that sea level forms a complete circle right around the island. Now, of course, sea level is the nought meter contour. So we can label it here that this is zero meters. Now from there we could walk inland until we are 20 meters above sea level. So we're going horizontally inland and we're going vertically up. And it's not 20 meters horizontally that we worried about, it is the 20 meters vertically up. So if we look at the edge here we're going to go 20 meters vertically and see how far inland we are. So 20 meters vertically we can draw like that and then that distance there would be 20 meters. So we can't obviously walk into the land so we've walked up the slope at an angle until we are 20 meters vertically above sea level. And We can do the same on this side. We go inland going up the slope until we are 20 meters vertically. Okay, now if we were to do that all the way around, or another way of looking at it is if we went inland until we're 20 meters above the sea, and then we turn and we walk at the same height all the way around the island, what we are doing is tracing out a contour. So let's do that. So if we start 20 meters above sea level, and we're going to walk all the way around the island, staying at 20 meters above sea level and we'll get something like this. And that will go all the way around and form a complete circle. And then we can do the same for 40 meters. We go up the slope until we are another 20 meters vertically above sea level. So we go up the slope until we are another 20 meters vertically. So we've gone inland and notice it may be much more than 20 meters, in this case it may be a few hundred meters. And then we go 20 meters vertically. And once again we can then walk around the island staying at that same height and we will again get something like this. And notice now that this is a fairly gentle slope compared to that one, so we've had to go quite a long way further inland before we get to our 20 meters vertically. So we've had to go quite a long way inland to get once again 20 meters vertically up. So if this is the 20 meters vertically above sea level and that's another 20 meters then obviously what we've got is that this is the 20 meter contour and the next one is the 40 meter contour. So we can label it accordingly. And so on up the slope. So we can then go and find the 40 meter contour by the same process, the 60 meter contour it is now by the same process, and the 80 meter contour. And notice that they are all forming complete circles right around the island. Right, so that is how contours relate to a three-dimensional island. So let's turn that now into a map. Right, so we can take our three-dimensional picture and turn it into a two-dimensional map. Again starting with sea level and the sea level contour we will draw in in blue and it's going to look something like this. That is our nought meter contour. And then the 20 meter contour is going to go around and 
all the way around. We couldn't see this part of it in the three-dimensional diagram and the 40-meter contour likewise. And that side of the island is a bit steeper than that, so the contours are closer together. 60 meters. And finally, 80 meters. And once more we can label them as we did before. And note that when we label a contour, we label it so that when you look at it the right way around, you are looking upslope. Right, so that's a very simple example as to how we actually develop contours. Now, you can't obviously work out where the contours are going to go just by looking at it. You've got to have some heights. So in the next exercise we are going to draw a contour map using the original heights and then work out how they work with the rules of how to draw them.